7.30 if you're on the West Coast. But we're going to spare no time whatsoever. Let's get into bank. It's our matchup of the afternoon slash evening and another buck ban would you look it at that it seems like we have a tradition when we're watching games between teams the buck is the target i am curious if we're going to see the thatcher or perhaps the hibana the hibana has been banned three times i believe that i know of so far this tournament the buck is the second time that i've seen it it will be the monty ban coming out all right one. so maybe they know something that we don't because i didn't expect dark zero to pull out a monty no, that is a that is a fun one on a map like Bang. On a map like Bang, very open, a uh, lot of vertical play, not a lot of direct takes besides the basement. If you want to go for a server push, so not sure what that's about. But again, they might be the wiser. Kai Bang comes out despite Thatcher being open. However, with this band going through, it means you don't have to play the Thatcher. It is more right. of an option, but of course, it makes life easier. Absolutely, last band coming. Valkyrie, in. I said it. Wrong. I was Mira was my second choice. Oh yeah, Mira sure. Was my second. Sure. You said it with your chest. Oh, I did. Well, I will say this. With Bok being banned, you can argue that the Mirrorinos are hard to deal with from down below because Bok is non-existent on the board, but that doesn't matter. Mirror is not here, so we can ignore that fact. However, I'm curious to see where Dark Zero chooses to go first, given these operator bans. It is currently like a locker's defense, but with the aggression of the Valkyrie, we could see a pretty good roam because there'll be information on the board. One thing to note, Parker. Alamo has been playing a fair bit of Ying throughout his regional tournaments in yep. Copa de Elite and Brasiliano and he chooses to six pick off it into a Twitch so they tease it knowing as an option he changed his mind by the way he's not on the Nook instead he's just flexing all those operators he could play it's so nice to hear you say it with the perfect accent Nook yeah yes, that's indeed. the only way to say it that is correct the only correct way okay, should I, I say it. so we'll see what Ali Mao can do one of the highlights of him on his team is how flexible he is yep. all throughout Brasileiro all throughout Copa Elite and then of course the Mexico Major being a huge one in particular was his ability to play a lot of different roles. They call him the Brazilian Pengu, by the yeah. way, as I'm sure you are aware. Yeah, I would say that, so his name is Carl, and I can call him that because we're tight like that, if you know that means that reference. Um, Carl, his name's Carl, and I can call him that. His name is Carl, exactly. Yeah. Um, we, we've spoken individually, and you know, a lot of people call me Brazilian Pengu, as you mentioned, with the aggressive smoke play, and of course, like a stellar performance. He kind of came out of nowhere, and I've already solidified himself as like one of the players, despite his first international event, I believe, being the Mexico Major, which is quite incredible. It, it really was. I mean, I believe his first event was actually the Six Invitational, technically. Well, oh yeah, technically, yeah. Technically, yes. Yeah, technically, yes. And it's, I mean, I wasn't there. I'm reloading. So I'm just I, like. Yeah. But it was actually put on. It was put on by uh, UB Paris, if I remember correctly. Theirs and uh, yeah, looked like a looked like a sweet event. Uh, but either way, either way, we got Ibana on the board, and I did see that Lagonis is running those can openers, so plenty of harbage on the side of Team One. Of course, a limo might look to go for a sneaky play as the Valkyrie being open actually increases the value of the Valkyrie. Yellow Pink comes through, Nick gets cooked, gets tossed, does not hit the mark, nice try, and DR stays alive, doesn't even take a single point of damage, shield stays up to. Oh, and there goes the other grenade this time as they're going to be roaming in tandem. Him and Hyper and JR staying scot-free for now. Pambazu with that information, and Nitro Cell will go waiting for Neskin to swing on in. That's going to either be a sound call or a Valkyrie camera to give the information away. Ali Mao and Neskin now on drone. Lagonis on drone as well. So three players, four players in fact, as Ali Mao now gets off and the numbers go down again. Remember Parker, this is a basement defense and half the round is almost over and Dark Zero has still has Rome presence on the first floor and Neskin just entered CEO, KDS in the janitor hall and they just got lobby control. Dark Zero is pulling a number here. It almost seems like they're playing a completely different side than the one they actually are and uh, Neskin having a hard time with the floor but it gets open from Dark Zero oh. and the kill comes out. How unlucky is that Parker? Well, I mean, like I said, you want to tempt fate, that sort of thing happens. And Hyper takes him down. Eclipse taking some damage in the process. But DZ at the moment stands with just a little bit over a minute to go with a big advantage. Sledge reduced to nothing. Though both grenades from Neskin have been used, KDS still has two in his pocket. As you talked about, those can openers, the secondary hard breach gadgets, for those of you that may be unfamiliar with the term, right now being held on to by Lagonis as he and KDS side by side will try to take some control of blue with KDS dropping. 
Oh, interesting here. The wall that's deep in server here that we see KDA is looking at is actually soft, which means that they don't even need the hard breach for that particular wall. They can just use the remainder of the can openers on the plant wall that we see Lagoon is opening right now, which means Team 1 are actually in a fairly good position uh, in the circumstances. And they're in, in fact, Ali Mao doing an army crawl to kills. Two more elude him as there goes the diffuser planted. And Ali Mao's Ooh. third kill. There's a fourth! Ooh. Carl, you call him Carl. Four kills. Carl, you can't do that. Four kills, Space Station Charm to boot, and Team 1 starts off with a round victory. I was almost gonna say, it looked like Team 1 gave Dark Zero so much respect in that early round, but then Alemo jumps the head and says, no, no respect will be had. I will shut it down right here, right now. And the plant from Lagunas came down the same moment, so chaos was created. And that is where Team 1 thrives. It's where Latam as a region thrives. It's in that chaos zone. Beautiful round by Team 1, All in the, in the end game, I will say the early game went to Dark Zero in their favor. They did a good job on the room. Well, there was a lot that was spent there by Dark Zero, but they ultimately just got pummeled by one man whose name oh. means German in Portuguese. That's true. Ali Mao, so true. not Defenders a Lemo. Lemo, Mao, Carl, he has many names. Carl! And he plays many operas because he's six-picked from the Nook into the Sophia, which means he just keeps on showing off, Parker. What is this man doing? I don't know, but... He's very flexible, and like we said, we've talked about this ad nauseum. If you listen to us during the Mexico Major, we discussed it quite frequently. I don't know exactly what's going on here. It seems like a member of Dark Zero has He's at the vanished. Server. He said that's yeah. it. Pan Bazoo has the left the building. So I don't know. For those that are wondering, it consists of Dark Zero as a North American representative, Team One as the Latin American slash Brazilian representative, Vitality as the European representative, and Sandbox okay, as the APAC the representative. Yep. So. With Sandbox and DZ getting pummeled, giving Vitality and Team 1 huge victories, not only do they get all three of those points, but they also get a ton of, of round differential points. Which they do. Out with right now, Vitality being at a plus six, and Team 1 currently being at a plus six as well, which is why you can see Team 1 in the live rankings has now vaulted up to first because they are technically tied with Vitality. That's good point. There's no real tiebreaker to be had just yet. So this is something where if Dark Zero is going to lose this match, and obviously obviously that's not necessarily a given. Yep. There it is. And we see Canadian six pick in the polls, and I believe, yes, they were playing open area. So Dark Zero is saying we're going to cut our losses. Defenders we got one L down in the basement, and we're looking to get a W upstairs. All right. So round number two underway. All seems to be well in the world. We talked about Ali Mao, by the way, six picking and being very flexible. There's a Zofia in play instead of the Ying, as you talked about before. And obviously Ali Mao, or sorry, not a Ying, a Nook. But wanting to go with that game before the six pick happened from what was it a Ying to a Twitch and then to a Nook? Yes, it was the triple six pick taken to speak, a double six pick. Absolutely incredible stuff. Yeah. Really yeah, just the like hallmark that. of a champion. I mean, to be fair, the Ying, not necessarily super crucial for Bang, so it makes perfect sense why he doesn't play it, but also makes perfect sense to show it just for that fear factor. Just like, you know, if you're a player that can play Monty, showing the Monty and then six picking off it, it makes the enemy go, oh no, what if they actually do bring the Monty? Because it has a consequence on the play style. The Nurk is great for this map, especially because the Valkyrie is open. There's information on the board that you can sneak past. But Canadian says, we will have none of that. I will go in the pulse with the cardiac sensor. Now we'll figure out exactly where that heartbeat is. And a great operator for Canadian as well. Very fun. Iconic. Iconic. I would also agree with that label. For those of you who have ever watched Canadian on any team he's played on, Continuum, Evil Geniuses, Space Station, now Dark Zero, if they have ever gone to bank, he plays that pulse roll inside of gold, and he basically quarterbacks the entire play for the team. And that's right now, he might not be in gold. He's inside of the vault, but they're close enough. They're close enough, Parker and Canadian. We speak about value that goes off the screen, AK things that don't show on the scoreboard. Canadian is one of them, Super is another. They might not necessarily have the most stellar performance every single game, but they have their moments, and not only that, but the sheer value they bring in the communication and the leadership of their team is they could be here dropping zero kills every single map and still be really good on those teams. 
Wrecking Crew from Neskin above. A very quick round so far taking place. We're at the halfway point or about a second away from it. And they'll tear away at the floor. Still continuing onwards as Neskin goes for hammers per minute right now. <laughs> The uh, hammer is swinging and swinging and swinging, it ain't stopping, and that's what you need to do when you take a buff. The benefit that you have is that you can make a bunch of holes in the floor, do some verticality, gain some map control, and take that area under your control. And that's exactly what they're gonna do. They're gonna work their way slowly through the map, but time is ticking, Parker. And meanwhile, Carl and Canadian having a bit of a stare down contest to the walls almost. We can call them by their real names, Carl and Troy. Carl and Troy. Carl and Troy, for true. those of you that are watching. And there's a Claymore down to net Canadian, should he walk through that door back into blue. Team 1 assembling over by square stairs, and one of those can openers, as you refer to them as, will now open up a small window into the staff room where the first of two bomb sites is. NGR knew he was in trouble, so he might as well go for broke. He stands up and gets sat down by KDS. Team 1 looking to add to that with Pambazoo falling now as well. But the Pulse and the Telltale signs of that UMP damaging Ali Mal. Lagonis is in and Team 1 are just bruising through DZ at the moment. Still in the back of the bomb site, Canadian will have to retake. A nitro cell is available for him, but not much he can do as Ali Mao almost has that diffuser planted, leaving Eclipse in a 1v4 clutch or kick scenario, and he chose the kick option. Team 1 up to nothing as they just find every player from DZ and merciless, mercilessly kill them. It's a bit odd. Canadian doing a good job being in basement and staying alive throughout the most of that round, but I am curious what exactly they gained from his presence in the basement. Yes, he has the cardiac sensor out, he's gaining information, but it did not appear to be like Darkseer really acted upon that information. They were sitting on site, we saw in DR, once the can opener went out from Lagonis, he just got shot down immediately. The shield didn't matter, the position didn't matter, the smoke got taken out of play, and since that kill, the round just fell apart one by one from Dark Zero, and the second Troy comes up the main stairs, he gets instantly taken off the board as well. So what exactly was that post about? I can't figure it out. Well, you're going to have another round to do that, Nick, because Teller's Archive's defense is going to once again put Canadian on that all-too-familiar roll. Eclipse will swap off to a Warden. Team 1 likes what they've been seeing so far out of their composition, so very minimal changes on their end. They're just going to put Ali now back on that nook instead of running with the Zofia. I like the Valkyrie pick here from Panbasu. Yes, the pulse information is nice, but it is limited, it is restricted. The Valkyrie camera, with IQ not in play, as she typically never is, will have a more unlimited or a bigger factor, so to speak. You can choose exactly what areas that you want information over, and the beautiful part about Valkyrie is that if you put a camera somewhere and it gets destroyed, it typically means that the enemy is in that area, so even the fact that the camera is dead gives you information on its own. Well, we see Teller's Archives now as the third bomb site comes out for Dark Zero. Unsuccessful on their defense and bank so far. If we say a bomb site or a map tilts in favor, then, well, bank might as well be the face of a mountain because it is attacker favored out the wazoo. And I believe that's the technical term for it. The attackers are having a great time so far on bank. And Team 1 are no different whatsoever. Being able to take map control quite quickly and the roamers for Dark Zero have, in that first round, I think they did quite a good job. But then past that, they had some difficulties. Certainly. And I think, as you said, with the map control and being a slightly attacker favored, arguably, it kind of plays the same role as Coastline, where you have the outside angles, you have the side repels and let's say, CEO, for example, you have these big open areas that, yes, they're hard to take as an attacker, but they're also really hard to defend. Lobby is kind of no one's territory. It's like it's Switzerland, if you will, but eventually attackers will typically get a hold of it. And once that happens, that's when you know as a defender that you're in trouble. As a defender, I would highly recommend trying to go for some sort of um, strategical aggression. Try and find an area, a lone player, even a jump out of a window. Trade that one for one kill. It's worth it because if you don't do something on defense, the attackers will slowly strangle you out. And that is what we're seeing time and time again. It's a great Valkyrie camera, though, just to highlight the push that's coming yep. on in from Team One. And Eclipse finds some. Pretty nice bullets there. You've got the double MPX combo of Pambazoo and Eclipse working together, and the Warden is credited with that first kill. A nice first blood from Dark Zero. It's their second so far of this matchup, but it was pretty ineffective in round number one. Will it be better this time? 
Certainly, and we saw the Valkyrie camera from Pambosu in, in the corner of Lobby, and when Dark Seer has the information that they can play around, when they can make decisions based off actual information, not just guessing, that's when they are the strongest. They know where they can sit on site, for how long they can sit on site, and they know exactly when Team 1 is going to strike, and they will have an answer for it. They have two C4s, one on Pambosu, one on Canadian, and Eclipse finds another on Levi. Oh my goodness, DZ are just gunning them down as they walk right in the running man. From Lagona, says Ali Mao, picks up that diffuser. He's in the middle of the site. Neskin will need to cover. Walls blowing open in front of him. Ali Mao, do you trust your teammates? That's the question. Neskin still watching. Diffuser goes down successfully. He's managed to do the unthinkable getting it down. Damage being done to Ali Mao, and a grenade gets tossed out from Neskin. No kills, nothing like that. Nitro Cell goes out as well. A 1v4, but they know where he is. And it's very easy for Dark Zero to collapse on the final player of Team 1 and give DZ their first round. Very nice done. And we spoke about the information game when they walked in. Dark Seer, they were ready for it. They found two kills immediately. C4 found the third. And even in that one versus four, I believe one versus three, either or, they still had that lobby camera up, meaning that they had full information under the situation at hand. So Dark Zero were set up for success. Question comes. I mean, Alemo can play a lot of operators. Can he play the IQ? Do they think, do they deem that the Valkyrie is too big of a task for them? We'll find I, out. IQ's pick rate right now, by the way, in the basement. We did actually see her earlier being used in what you could call that yellow lineup. It was IQ, yep. Finca, and Lion, the three yep. yellow icons being brought out by... Uh, Furia against Space Station. So, who knows? I mean, IQ has some issues, obviously, with the fact that explosives are in vogue and she doesn't bring any of that Attackers to the table. To but if you feel that a Pulse or a Vigil or a Valkyrie are being too much of a nuisance, I mean, we've talked about this on every single time we cast Bank. That lobby is huge. There's lots of places in square stairs as well for you to hide these Valkyams. IQ might not be a terrible choice if you have enough secondary explosives. Certainly. Alemo now showing the Twitch and sticking with it as well. I, I kind of also feel like Twitch is almost a mini IQ with that change to her Twitch drone where you have the infinite range, kind of like the zero camera sap. You can look for those Valkyrie cameras. Sure, you don't have a scanner. You can't see exactly where they are. But if you take the time to look for them, if you find them, you can also destroy them. And that's good value. Also for Ali Mao, if we're on Operator Watch, this is his third Operator in four rounds. So playing Nook twice, Sophia once, and now Twitch as well. And had flexed very briefly a Ying, but then swapped off of it. So this is why we talk about his versatility over and over again. We haven't really needed to see a ton of versatility from Dark Zero, but it goes with that saying that with the roll swaps with the way they are, Eclipse was playing the ward and now he's on the mute. Ooh. There's some flexibility there on Dark Zero. Inflexible though is NJR. Rigor mortis, I believe they call it, as now NJR is dead. Yeah, that is a tough one, especially seeing as uh, that's the alibi off the board. That's that 1.5x gone, but thankfully the gadget got put down, I presume, and so did the shield, so there'll be some value for him and his team, but Playing a four, five versus four in this case this early on is never a fun feeling and Dark Zero finally got around and already now Team 1 are back in the driver's seat all of a sudden. Canadian creeping up those stairs. I don't know what the smoke is going to be able to do. Canadian oh. smoke is actually, it's not something I see very often, no. so it's quite, yeah, it's peculiar. I believe there was a brief period of time where he was on smoke on EG, but uh. I could be wrong. KDS's Reign of Terror, by the way, his kill tally now is two. Oh, Sorry. It's too easy, Parker. Too easy, and there's three kills for KDS. I spoke a little bit too soon. Take Four it. kills for KDS, all right. Yep. Well, this round just kind of fell on its head. It was there, and it's almost gone as Eclipse finds the land. Oh, he gets a kill oh. for his own, actually, making that a one versus four. But however, Parker, clutching out this round would take more than a miracle with this little health left. And this C4 is not going to do much damage either. <laughs> no, and Ali Mao gets in on it. How many operators has he gotten a kill on now? Did he get a kill on Zofia? Because if so, that's a kill on all three of the different operators. Also, apologies, Levy got the opening pick, not yes. KDS. So KDS yes. had those three kills, not four. And Team 1, for the moment, they allowed Dark Zero to pick up a single round, and I say that with my chest. They allowed them to pick up that round, because now things are working out like normal. Look at this, the rotates that are coming in. DZ getting picked apart with limited information and limited understanding of what is going on, and boy oh boy does Team 1 punish them every step of the way.
Yeah, I mean, for a team like Dark Zero that run a tight ship, there's some loose elements and loose parts in this because, I mean, KD has found three isolated players that almost begged him to take their life away because they swung him solo with no support, no information, no refragability, and they even gave him time to reload between each kill. And when you play Ayana, you have limited bullets in that gun, but it didn't matter. He had plenty of time to take care of that issue. And yeah, to be honest, a little bit weak from Dark Zero. I was expecting something else, something more. And uh, I hope their attack inside is going to give us a better showcasing than their current defender situation. But we well, still got Barangs to go. I, I mean, yeah, this is a this is an attacker-sided bank. We've been seeing it almost all day right now, Nick. So it's, it's kind of like the Empire demo where if they could end this even 4-2, they're, that's fine, right? Like, they have someone to do with that. Absolutely, and Darkstar has not taken their time out either. They have not. So, there's still time for DZ to pause it. I know, knowing Canadian and knowing Mint, if they lose this round, I don't think they take their time out with one more round to go. And if they do take it, it's because they want to win that round, like you said, possibly keep it a 4-2, providing Team 1 wins this and then set up for the next half because yeah. that is ultimately, at this point, this half is lost for yeah. Dark Zero based on the way that they're playing thus far. They can still turn it around, but their focus is very clearly going to be on when they move to attack. I think it's a very good point, taking that timeout to freshen up the attacks and focus on that comeback, if anything, because the attacks are unavoidable. They need some rounds on that side to win. Twitch, we spoke about earlier, can find the Valkyrie cameras, can zap them, and so he does. Or she, we speak about the operator. <laughs> and uh, yeah, good value there. And that denies some of that information that Dark Zero loves. The front office wall gets opened up as well by some of the ex Kairos. That huge change to Hibana obviously now being felt on bank now that you yeah. can divide how many ex Kairos are used instead of just batches of six. This is another open area defense, by the way. No top floor hold from Dark Zero thus far, which is a bit abnormal based on the rotations that we've seen out of bomb sites in bank thus far today. It is interesting, and uh, Team 1 doing the same old, same old, giving that hammer a little bit of a swing, or many swings. <laughs> um, I mean, and this is the thing, if Dark Seer is not going to challenge or combat this situation, then why should Team 1 do anything different? That's a good point. And Pambazoo, while he greets those hammer swings, as you talked about, down below with the UMP in hand, well, that's not exactly the gun that you want, unless you're just clicking heads. It's that simple. That low rate of fire is not going to necessarily do much damage, especially with an L85 in hand. A series of tunnels allow Pambazoo to get from B back from tellers and archives, and he will now sit down in open area, with Team 1 having relatively good control of the top floor. Everybody is still alive, and there's a minute left in round 5. Yeah, but look at these positions. We got three guys sitting very comfortable inside, two guys around the main stairs. I mean, Canadian is not in basement, gonna maybe run around to server stairs, but ultimately, what is the win condition for Dark Seer right now? Because the second the Team 1 starts hitting this bomb site, it's all but gunfights. There's no consistent movement to stop this push besides the crossfire, which right now they have, but with the vertical play above, with the hatches being open, it is so limited where Dark Zero can play. Ali Mao just narrowly missed out on an opportunity inside of Staff Room, and things are going to get messy right now. NJR taking some damage. Could this be the first shot? All quiet on the Western Front. No, Troy, he might be old, but he can still hit those shots. Down goes Levy. A second was in line for Canadian, but he backs away, backs right into Ali Mao, and then the corpse will comically fall on over. Tick tock, though. Oh, my. As Ali Mao gets gunned down by Eclipse, still playing in this position. The smoke goes off, so that position from Eclipse will need to be moved. As Lagonis now inside of the bomb. But the diffuser in hand will need to be planted, and he's last alive. DZ will bury him instead of letting the diffuser go down. And there you go. They are inching closer to tying up this first half. I mean, Troy making a play there on the flank, and even though the Hibana upstairs was aware of this because she was on that drone that Troy shot, Troy lands a fantastic pre-fire, one-shot headshot, takes care of that. Unfortunately, it backs into Alemao on the rotate, but then Eclipse gets the timing as Alemo throws the smoke grenade, he swings with SMG-11, takes him out, and off those kills, off that trade, that is where Dark Zero found a leg to stand on. But if that had not happened, I am very curious as to how that round would have played out because the only thing that was left from Dark Series in there are the two or three players basically hiding in a corner each on the bomb side, which is not the greatest win condition that you have. Team 1, also running very low on time, wasn't left with many like, choices left. Tried to make the best of it. Dark Series come out of top. 3 2 now, still in favor of Team 1, of course, but. Dark Zero looking better and better on the scoreboard, and even if Team 1 took this round, they have a fantastic opportunity when they go on attack. 
So this is do or die for Dark Zero. They want to try to keep it close. The win condition for them is tie up this first half, especially if Bank does tilt towards the attackers. And we've seen some signs of brilliance from DZ. That last round, a lot of it really did come down to a lack of communication through that mid-round, but then answered back by Team One's own issues, being able to dot their I's and cross their T's when the execute came down. So. Dark Zero prevail, and they're going to be bringing a lineup that is full of information. Just look at the right side of your screen at the moment. Warden is going to be able to see through those flashbangs and smokes quite effectively. Three black eye cameras. You've got a vigil to roam, a pulse to give you information, and a bulletproof camera that comes from the castle, as well as those castle barricades acting as intel too when they get blown open. Yeah, this seems much more like the first round from Dark Zero with that aggressive roam game where they stand their ground, and because of all that information, they know where the enemy enemies are of Team 1 and they can make decisions around that and rotate accordingly. Hyper playing upstairs on the top floor, playing pretty aggressive, trying to get some drones and you see they have like a, I think it's like a 1-3-2 layer going on or a 1-4-1 so they have all force in control and they'll just slowly start creeping back as they need to. As my friend would say, time to ring some ears. A nice look at the Valkyrie cameras there and an opening in the floor as well. This one in particular, you're going to be... Same one as before. Oh, Never found it. Attack. You're going to be seeing that in a ranked game starting probably tomorrow, if not already today. If, if not already today, yeah. The shameless. The shameless players. I mean, so. there's no shame in copying the best players in the world, Parker. If you were to copy someone, let it be the ones that are best at it. I think that's a very noble way of putting it. And I don't think this Valkyrie camera for Dark Zero ever got discovered before okay. either. That's the thing. In the previous round, it stayed there. And because it remained, it was able to give information and power to Dark Zero for the entire three minutes. And it's very true. It did, in fact, not get found, which means that Dark Zero, again, they have all this information over Lobby. And Team 1 does not have any clue. Now, they could think, oh, maybe that Avalgar came out last round, but they'll never know for sure. That is a doubt in the back of their mind that they will have to live with as this execute slowly starts getting set up. But this time around, Team 1, a lot of time to go. Smoke grenades onto the Thermite, nades on the Sledge. No needs on Anna, however, they got all the tools to work with, but I'm so afraid of this individual Valkyrie camera. And Nemo dropped on the skylight looking for a play. I actually think there's flashes on that thermite. They didn't know. Oh, you are correct, Parker. So, Lagonis, interestingly enough, bringing a different secondary gadget. As there goes off the last exothermic charge, Alimau was looking the wrong way, and well, guess what? They're both cloaked, but with your own eyes, you can see them, and Hyper prevails in the gadget of the cloaky ones. Down goes Panbazoo's KDS trades back. So, Team 1 have the ability to push in, but they're going to need to confront Eclipse. This has been the sticking point for Team 1. Eclipse on the stairs is able to watch the entirety of the front of the bomb site, meaning that when Team 1 breaks in, they get torn to shreds. Will they move somebody over in that position? That's the real question. Pulse seen for a second, and Neskin can't do anything, can't contend with NJR, but two kills, actually, as he trades out, and Eclipse has been dealt with. There it is. KDS, well, he and Levy find Lagonis down as it's Canadian and Hyper to go, but look at their HP. One shot each, and KDS doesn't even want an ADS. He does doesn't need to. It's a 4-2 first half for Team 1. KDS with the flare going for the hip fire Parker. I was thinking, what if he misses? Like, that's going to be the round, maybe. But he lands the shots, thankfully, of course. Last two in players from Dark Zero was incredibly low on health, so it didn't really matter. Ultimately, one bullet would do the job. We saw the benefit of Dark Zero playing all three floors. Hyper with that late round as a limit of the skylight. Kind of surpassed him. I don't think they were fully aware of his position. Hyper finds the flank beautifully. And, yeah, it was close, but not close enough. Close only counts in <sighs> horseshoes and hand grenades. That's how it works. So, <laughs> okay. Close but no cigar, I guess you could say. First defense for Team 1. So far, the attacker sided bank streak continues oh. apace. But Canadian okay, will be on the ying. The Interestingly the enough, we still have yet to see a top floor defense from either of these teams. As the very first defense from Team 1 is going to be open area down below. Definitely, and the thing is, it's funny because T1 showed the aim went off it, now Dark Zero are the ones to actually just stick with it. And Canadian has been playing uh, multiple Yings and even Capitals throughout his time in the NEL of Stage 3. So this is not something that's absurd or super weird, it's actually a core pick for Dark Zero, 
and it's also typically Canadian playing that operator. Dark Zero also love those weird picks, if you want to yeah, call them that. And when I say weird search. picks, what I mean Attackers is they'll run a Capital, they'll run a Ying, they'll run a Blitz, they'll run a Monty. There is good reason why Team One banned a Monty in here. Yeah. And that's because Dark Zero likes to bring in the Unorthodox. And it's a team that has always tried to set the meta. This goes all the way back to when they were known as God of Gaming, and then Flipside, and then SK. This was a team that always wanted to set a tempo of the region and wanted to create a new meta. Now, Dark Zero might not necessarily be the leaders in that anymore, but they can still have a couple tricks up their sleeve, and that's what it looks like with these picks, especially a Ying being on the board. Hard Breach Gadget being brought for the Ying, as well as the Candelas, and lots of destruction work with the LMG as well. She can work quite effectively on a map like Bank. Certainly can. Sophia also bringing those... Uh What's it called? Breaching charges, the soft floor. So you have the sledge, but you also have a backup in hyper. And uh, the Ying, the capital, those funky or weird operators. I refer to them as like execution enablers or like execution operators. You typically pick them for the stage three of the round. They execute when it gets explosive. But then the thing is, Parker, what if Team 1 is roaming? Do you use the Candelas in the Stage 1 and Stage 2? And then when you come to the Execute, you have, you know, no more Candelas left, which is why you pick the Ying. There's a fine line of when to use it, because if you don't get to Stage 3, it doesn't matter. Oh, Hyper in pursuit, and oh my, oh. KDS is caught looking, and still more, but Hyper misses his mark on Ali Mao. The castle walks away. And would you believe it, the KDS and Ali Mao right now leading the way for their team. That kill on the Hyper is huge. No ability for the lifeline to be used. That's two explosives down, that's two stuns down, and a good gun and a great player sidelined. Yeah, the soft breaches as well, which means that NGR is the only vertical and soft breaches, so to speak, available. I think the first coup was amazing, they got that freebie, but then, you know, as you spoke about earlier in the previous game, if you get the first kill, but you don't manage to make anything more out of it, you don't get the max value. NGR gets C4 gets and therefore is injured, but I just wish that after the first kill from Hyber, he had backed down, let the drone do the work, let a comrade come in. Speaking of comrades, Canadian finds Levi as well, and uh, yeah, a little rest onto NGR, he comes back on his feet. Looking for a four versus three with 47 seconds left on the clock. Ali Mao on the hunt though, the call down there, but Canadians predicting it. Oh. Two kills for the leader of Dark Zero. Still two more to go. Does Dark Zero want to start putting some rounds on the board now at the sides have swapped? Oh, Team okay. one barricaded inside of the bomb site, not bomb literally, but holding down this position. The avenue's on in, will need to be watched by both Lagonas and Neskin. That's the only chance for Team One at this point. Exothermic charge will go down on the wall, leading into the staff room, forcing Lagonas out of his position. And he thinks somebody's gonna be coming from over towards archives. But you have to seek shelter by the bomb chassis and possibly drop down and retake. He's looking for it. Where does he go? A rotate available. He can't out-duel Pam. It's all he can. And then Neskin through the wall picks up two, leaving NJR in a do or die. How did they turn this one around? But with a second left, NJR knows he's not going to get in. An in absolutely unthinkable turnaround from Team One that gives them a round they had no business winning. Parker, what just happened? I thought that was a done deal for Dark Zero. The early round, the mid round, even the late round execute. I guess Team One really just said, no, we're not giving you this round. That was such a free kill for Hyper as well. Yeah, and then he became the free kill because he kept swinging, pre-firing through the wall when he could have just held the angle for the peak. Sure, a wall bang looks great in the highlight reel, looks great in a montage, but when it comes down to losing or winning the round or getting the biggest advantage possible, I don't think it's worth the risk. Well, that is, that's the moment where I, as Dark Zero, I would be taking a timeout here. This, this would, last round or this round would be the best time. You have the most amount of rounds available to you, and you definitely don't want to do it when it's too late, because then you got that match point creeping in, which, you know, 5-2, we're basically there. And, uh, yeah, I really wish we had one, but if not this one, surely the next. Well, when you see a 4-2 scoreline, if you are bad at math, or you don't know the way the Rainbow Six works, it means that your opponents need to do the same thing in order to push you to overtime. You also need a 4-2 scoreline. So in order for Dark Zero to go to OT, they cannot surrender more than two more rounds to Team One. Team One knows they only need to win two rounds and they're safe until overtime. They've already done one of that. And in a game of inches like Rainbow Six, and especially between these two teams, it is remarkable that Team One was able to just steal that round away. And boy, I'd be 
I'd be a little bit disheartened and heartbroken if I was Dark Zero. No, it's certainly. It was an important round for the score, especially for Dark Zero, and it looked like they had it, then they didn't. They will have to now crawl their way back a little bit harder to try and have an equal footing with Team 1. But at the same time, we just saw Dark Zero is fully capable of winning those rounds, so all they have to do, Parker, is do it again. <laughs> so simple, right? It's really simple. All you need to do is just win two more rounds, Team 1. That's it. It's so easy, isn't it? I think it's important to, under to know yourself a as a player, as a team, that you have done it before, which means you can do it again. Whereas if you're just getting shut down constantly, you might start thinking, what exactly are we going to do or how are we going to do it? But as I said, Dark Zero, they know they can. If you're Dark Zero, even if you don't win this match, you want to be able to put as many rounds yes. under your belt as possible. If you go back to the Mexican Major, you will very fondly recall the Cyclops versus Team 1 situation, which went down to round counts before a tiebreaker had to happen. One of the most unlikely set of circumstances you could ever see, but hey, it happened. In this case, if you're Dark Zero, if you are not able to put more than another round or so on the board, you're going to end up... Oh, you're going to end up in worse shape than NJR, actually, is right now. I'm not going to lie. NJR has had a, I don't want to say a rough game, because he has been doing quite well, but he's had a couple of deaths now as the first man, and it must feel terrible. Your team needs you, you want to do really good, but Levi just says no, what? shut you down. The nade doesn't quite get the kill, but does a lot of damage. Second one comes through, Hyper finds one as well. All of a sudden, it's a... Four versus three. Dark Zero in the lead. And DZ coming out of nowhere with this. Attackers Nick just walking in, taking no prisoners, and punishing them. And it's going to continue. Hyper also takes out Neskin. Lagonis and KDS, a rare bandit in play at this level, creeping up, watching towards the staff room. Oh, look at this. Oh, no. Oh. He's going to get caught. A third kill from Hyper, and Lagonis goes too. They get the first pick, but DZ answers back admirably, and that's their third round so far of this map. I mean, Hyper is everywhere this past round, and now this round as well. He's kind of like that guy who's like, hey, I'm walking here. And then anyone that walks in his path, he just says, no, this is my territory. I'm going to shut you down, take this ground. But once that ground is taken, I'm going to keep moving. Here we see NTR, yeah, getting sent to the heavens once again. It was a great shot by Levi, but ultimately he was pinched in this corner and got traded out with the nade from Canadian. Beautifully done. And we see Hyper with the cutoff of the rotate. Nicely. Still no timeout being taken. Dark Zero obviously knows something that we don't, by the way, which is that they've got some confidence and confidence in spades. Another pulse pick Defenders is going to come out. This time it's not Canadian. They can't do that. Attackers. They're not on defense. It's going to come out in the hands of Levy. I mean, so, I was saying, sorry, Parker, to cut you off, but I was saying how Dark Zero, they, two rounds ago, they technically won it. They should have won it. Yep. Last round, now they won it. So they have the momentum, actually. And it, yeah, it looked bad. It was a heartbreaking round loss. But again, if they have the confidence, if they know they can do it, as I said, just do it again. Just do it again. They will get there. This should be a 4-4 game. It should be a 4-4 game. It should be a 4-4 game, but it's not. That's no consolation for Dark Zero. You could end a match and go, ah, oh, Shucks, I, we really should have won. You know, we, yeah, we really should have won that one. We basically won that we game. We basically won that game. But we lost. But you don't get the trophy. Out no. So, where's the value in that? No, I, it's it does not exist. So, does not exist. So, round number nine underway. Timeouts available for both teams still. Dark Zero putting in work here. And yes, they fell short of their very first attack. But after a shaky start on their second attack, DZ triumphed. And... Well, as much as they might have wanted to win that first round, it didn't work out that way. So their job now is significantly more difficult. But the good news for Dark Zero and for their fans is that it's an attacker-sided bank. And it has been quite consistently for all of the bank matches we've seen so far today. Yeah, we see Canadian with the Jackal pick, which is the first time today I think we've seen that. And it, it's a bit unfortunate because this is like the one round where Team 1 is not heavily roaming, as it's the basement bomb side. Of course, Neskin is an open area, Lagonis is on those silver stairs. But besides that little foundation that they have together, there's not much else going on. Dark here, if possible, should try and box in Neskin here in open area, isolate him, get that quote-unquote free kill, which they'll soon find out that he's there, and Hyper can cut his rotate on the main stairs once they know. 
Hyper's interest, though, lay over towards main lobby, but instead now maybe thinking otherwise of it. If there's ever any contest on blue, you've got a Warden who will be largely stun, flash, and smoke resistant, playing behind a deployable shield as well. So that's a position of strength for the Warden of Lagonus. So it's still droning out. They have not been able to box in Neskin as you had wanted, so that's an opportunity lost for Dirk's group. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. They're a bit slow on the map control. They didn't really have many people on the lobby side of things. Hyper was in the right area, but just not at the right time, so Neskin slips away, it's a 5 versus 5, he gets scanned on defeat seas, and now they know the whereabouts of their only roamer from T1, and Dark Zero can start doing step 1, which is setting up for the execute. Get the hatches, and the next step that they will have to deal with is that problem solving we spoke about in the previous game. The server stairs, the ADSs, the warden that cannot get flashed, cannot get smoked, he is sitting on top of that staircase, and Dark Zero needs to deal with him if they want to get control of server. They've opened up that square hatch now, so at least they can drop and potentially go behind Lagonus if nobody is watching from inside of CCTV, and that is going to be the big... I think hit. they're just going to go. I don't even think they care about Zero's partner. No, they're just going to rush right in, and they drop Ali Mal, finds the first. Down goes Hyper. Canadian takes out KDS, so they trade back and forth, but there will be a brief pause for the moment as the smoke from Ali Mal goes out. Eclipse downed as well, and he's finished off. Pambazoo, though, inside a garage. Takes out Neskin. Lagonis goes as well. All of a sudden, Team 1 are now trailing in numbers. But the magic man himself, Ali Mao, will need to be the one to clutch. Levy has the cardiac sensor. And there's Ali Mao with his second kill. Diffuser surrendered in front of him. Very limited ammunition left. One for Levy, leaving Canadian in a clutch or kick moment. The same as Eclipse. A trail of breadcrumbs, but it's the smoke instead. And Canadian gets shut down by Carl. Team 1 on match point. Beautifully done, I will say from Dark Zero, I didn't think that was actually going to work, but it did. They dropped down, they traded one for one, and Dark Seer, it looked like the round was about to end just in that moment. They were stuck in all these corners, but they clawed their way out, Parker, only to be shut down by Levi and Lemo on that 2VX situation. Beautifully played by them, they held their angles, they understood the situation. Maybe that information that they didn't have the fuser in control, perhaps, it looked like it. And, uh... I will say, nice try from Dark Zero. Something that we don't typically see, an aggressive hatch drop onto site without server presence. Very risky, but could also very well pay off. This is where they're going to have to take their time out, no? Yep, they, I mean, they have to. This they is, have to, it's but do die, they are not. Okay, so Dark Zero puzzlingly <sighs> not taking their time out. They are not the ones to set the tempo, by the way. They are going to be running headfirst into an open area defense. Yeah. They this are. is where Team 1 started and where they stole that round away, as we talked about. After that, the rotation for Team 1 was to go upstairs to the CEO and office bomb site in which they did not prevail, but then they looked significantly better on CCTV because of those final 10 seconds and the miracle that happened there. So Team 1 will go back to the bomb site that they arguably shouldn't have won. Dark Zero might be confident about this, but still, it puzzles me why they would not pick this time to take their time out, but Five we'll never know, partner. But the thing is, yeah, bomb located by attackers. I, don't, attackers I think a lot of teams, they have this the thing about the timeout where the coach has to call it out and it's the player still be like, yo, let's do it, which I don't think a player has that on his mind necessarily, even though you can be an IGL like, let's say, Canadian. You, it's almost like, I think for some players, you see as a timeout as a weakness. You are basically telling your opponent that you need to breathe through it. You talk through a problem. And sometimes, maybe perhaps, you still want to show that weakness. And uh, it might cost Dark Zero here, because I agree with you, Parker. I think they shoulda, woulda, coulda done it, but they didn't. And NGR did not see the Valkyrie camera, even though he was almost looking straight at it. NJR has been the opening death, what, two of the last three rounds yep. here? So not ideal for NJR to find himself in this position, but Levy knows that there's an opportunity to possibly take out NJR, but he can't find it, so he'll head back in. Oh my, they Wait, what is this camera? <laughs> they don't... Oh, okay. Hyper, well, it's on the floor. It's Hyper doesn't see it, but he's going to walk right in. Instead, they know he's there. He flicks away behind the reinforcement. There's the shotgun of the mute of Laguna, so Hyper will army crawl his way in. And a Nitro Cell goes off and doesn't kill him. All right, a bit odd. Hyper just remains with one HP. Talk about lucky. I mean, he just ate that C4 with his body, basically, Parker. And Hyper playing, oh, but that second one comes out, and that will surely close out the deal, and it does. Hyper playing really aggressive. The only person next to him is Canadian Standard Holy. He had NG on the repel, but Canadian, nice shot onto KDS, takes him out, four versus four. And now, maybe it doesn't look that bad after all. Hyper took two C4s to the chest to die, which means he took out a lot of resources with him. 
Well, and then Hyper goes down as well with that lifeline not really showing much promise either. So, boy, oh boy. Anywho, Team 1 will hold off for now. KDS was the top frag. Levy has caught up, or is at least as close to catching up as possible without actually being there. And Annie now has stretched his lead. Team 1 have been hitting their shots, and Canadian actually tied for top frag on Dark Zero, which is not something you see all the time. His expertise and skills are usually used elsewhere than on the actual killing fields. Yeah, it's interesting. Canadian's been almost second entry, and as you said, tied first for kills with Hyper, and this is not typical Canadian fashion, and it's not that I don't want to see Canadian frag it out, but you need to start questioning why or what or where is the rest of the team. NGR, Panbesu, we know where Hyper is. He's usually very deep and very alone, but also often gets shut down due to that fact. So I do want to see a little bit more from this Dark Sea, maybe Canadian can lead them more. But perhaps leaving for the charge is what is needed. NGR finds Neskin, and now we're setting up for stage three of the round. That is the execute, Parker. <laughs> and some flashes tossed down now as Pambazoo will inch his way in once again. This is the bomb site. Open oh, area, and Pambazoo knows what he needs to do, but he's going to look the wrong way, and T1 collapses on them, and everybody falls. Three rounds are all Dark Zero will get four rounds on the day. A rough outing for DZ. But Team One cap off an impressive day one here of the groups. These are the defending major champions. They topple Sandbox 